Hello and welcome to our 56th lockdown service from the Urshan Benefits. It's wonderful that you can join us. Today is the third Sunday of Easter. We celebrated Easter two weeks ago and we're continuing to look at Jesus' early life and as he appears to his disciples and the effect that it had on their lives. Well, today Jesus appears to his disciples in the upper room and the first thing he does when he gives them a Bible study and he shows them how his resurrection was planned right from the beginning of scripture, right from the beginning of the Bible. And so we look at that later. And so let us start our service together with the opening words. The Lord be with us, God of our days and years. We set this time apart from you. Form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so at the beginning of our service, let us confess to Almighty God. We take a moment to examine our lives. And let me read out a verse from Romans. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess you our weaknesses and unbelief. We have lived in our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. And may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ, our Lord. Amen. And shall we say the collect for the third Sunday of Easter? Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladden the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we have our readings from Scripture. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You had him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, who decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer would be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses to this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and there was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that he has completely healed him, as you can see now see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. This is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that the Messiah would suffer. Repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so let us stand for our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? 
when why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. And he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now sometimes when people meet, the encounter is life-changing. However, they may not realise it at the time. Now I remember one September, I had gone down to Brighton to go back to university, as it was starting on Monday. And I had gone to church on the Sunday and been invited around to a friend's house for lunch. It was a warm September morning, um, it was a barbecue, and his parents were away, I think. I trouble is, I can't really remember much about the day. Anyway, there as well was a girl, and she was starting her PGCE at the local teacher training college. Well, we got talking, then we got married, then we had kids. Cuts quite a long story short. But neither Caroline nor myself realised at that time, quite how life-changing that first meeting would be, how life-changing that first chat was. But if you'd asked me after the barbecue, after lunch, have you just had a life-changing experience? Well, I said no. To be honest, I can hardly remember anything about that first day. In fact, that day was even more significant for our children than it was for us, because as I met Caroline, if I'd said the wrong words, well, their whole future would have been hanging in the balance. What a scary thought. Well, in this chapter of Luke, verse chapter 24, we have a whole series of life-changing encounters. And our last one we have is to be found in our passage today in Luke 24. And firstly, we see today that the resurrection is facts. The resurrection is facts. Though actually, you have to go to the, back to an earlier life-changing encounter where Jesus met the two men on the road to Emmaus. And after he'd got them, they got up and they returned at once to Jerusalem. Then they found the eleven and those with them assembled, saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two on the road to Emmaus told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised when he broke the bread. Now, I guess at the moment, at that moment, the room must have been abuzz with excited conversations, like a newsroom full of reporters and a breaking story was just happening. But through, though they were excited by the rumours of the resurrection, the disciples were not prepared for what happened next. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. Now John tells us in the Gospel that the doors of the room were locked. Well, it's always unnerving, isn't it, to find someone unexpectedly close behind you who you didn't think was there. And there is certainly that in this. But there's more than just shock and surprise here. They were startled and frightened, thinking they'd seen a ghost. They share the fear that it's a natural human reaction to the supernatural. But Jesus was concerned to confirm his identity to them straight away. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. Which is 38 and 39. It's actually quite strange that Jesus points to his wounds to show them who he is. And I think there are two reasons for this. 
The first is to show them that he is real. He is not a ghost, as they first assume. He is physical. He is flesh and bones. But secondly, Jesus was determined to maintain a continuity between what had happened on the cross at Calvary three days earlier and what was happening now as he reappears to his disciples. Because the resurrection, but it does not cancel out the crucifixion, as though that nasty chapter was all over now and we can forget about it and we just rejoice in Jesus' resurrection and this happy post-Easter joy. Even in the book of Revelation, it mentions Jesus' wounds to keep on reminding us that the crucifixion really happened and that he did really rise from the dead. And so the disciples, with well, their mood changes somewhat at this point, but they're still struggling to grasp what has happened. And while they still don't believe it because of the joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. You see, the resurrection is fact. It really happens. But secondly, we see that this encounter shows us that the resurrection was planned. The resurrection was planned. So the first thing that Jesus did when he met his disciples is he opened the scriptures to them and showed them that what all that had happened was planned. Verse 45, and he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. So what God has done, he had first said he would do. The crucifixion and the resurrection were foretold. It was there in the Old Testament. The resurrection was planned. It wasn't plan B. Now lots of people imagine the Bible as a rather disparate collection of random religious writings. Jesus, however, insists that a careful and thoughtful reading of the entire Old Testament reveals a remarkable unity and an internal consistency. The Bible, from the beginning to the end, is one book about one man, the God-man, Jesus Christ, who came to suffer, to die, and to rise from the dead to secure forgiveness to those who will trust in him. This means it's not just a collection of random books. Now in our house, we have a growing collection of Captain Underpants books, and they all belong to Teddy, and nothing to do with me. Now, those books can be picked up in any order. You can read one and put it back into the bookshelf, and it doesn't matter what order they are read in. And often we treat the Bible like that, but that's not the case. This means that when we read it, then when we study it, we need to think about what it means in the context of the whole Bible, and the fact that the Bible is one big plan of God's. Then he opened his minds so he could understand the scriptures. He told them, verse 45, This is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem, you are my witnesses to all things. It's actually quite striking that on the first day of his risen life, Jesus spent his time teaching the Bible. Hardly what you expect from the risen Lord to do. You might imagine him shouting, I'm alive, I'm alive, here I am, here I am. But he spent his time teaching them from scripture. This means that we have to be very wary of any meetings that doesn't teach from the Bible. Even Jesus taught the Bible and he was perfect. The message of his preaching was not a philosophy, but logic on a basis of general principles. It was a gospel based on certain historical events, prophesied in the Old Testament and fulfilled in the history by Jesus Christ. So the resurrection was fact, the resurrection was planned, and that means thirdly, the resurrection requires a response. So firstly, we are to receive God's salvation plan. And once we've actually received that gift, we're not just to receive God's salvation, we're to preach it. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are a witness of these things. And so with those first disciples from that city, at that point in time, began the gospel ministry that was to reach the ends of the earth. Jesus' commission to the first disciples was not just to go out into the world, 
and to live changed lives of love. He did not say, go out and love people. He did not say, go out and be good. He said, go out and tell people. Not about yourself, but about the God who saves through his son Jesus. It was a salvation message more than it was an ethical message. And so, if my significant encounter with Caroline 18 years ago meant that I got married and had kids, this encounter with Jesus for the disciples meant the birth of the church. So that first life-changing encounter led to the creation of the church and a group of people who knew that the resurrection was fact, that the resurrection was planned, and therefore the resurrection required a response to share the good news and be those first witnesses. And if that was the first response to that life-changing news then, to that first important encounter then, well, that should be our response to the news of Jesus now, to us here today. Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for Jesus' resurrection. We thank you, Lord, that the resurrection is a fact, that it was planned, that it wasn't some part of plan B, but it was all part of plan A. And so help us, Lord, to respond to it by sharing that good news with others and following you. We pray in your name. Amen. And so having just reminded ourselves that the resurrection is a fact, let us stand as we said the creed together, which is our proclamation that we believe that the resurrection is fact. So let us stand as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to live, judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And so let us come to a time of intercessions. These intercessions were written by Reg Kirkpatrick. Let us pray. O oh Lord, give us success today. Help let us not forget the trouble we are in as a world, a nation, as individuals. We are all important in the building up of your kingdom. Help us to give the message clearly so that people understand. Give us strength to fight for what we believe and we ask for your protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we gather as your people. We come to walk a journey together, to talk and to share along the way, to meet and to know Jesus. Help us to marvel at all that Jesus has done for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, we are sorry that we fail to recognise you in our midst, that we are too preoccupied with ourselves. We are sorry that we have let you down, that we feast and don't invite others to share with us. We are sorry that we welcome friends and not always a stranger or anyone who makes us feel uncomfortable. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to be generous people, our church, our homes and our hearts. Make them always places of welcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living Lord, we bring to you the need of the world. We pray for those who consider themselves to be strangers and outcasts. Help us always to welcome the stranger, whatever the cost. Not sitting comfortably and ignoring people we think don't fit in. Not taking the easy way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for countries where food is in short supply. May we farm sustainably and eat sensibly so there's enough to feed the whole planet. We pray for anyone who at this time is struggling to obtain basic needs. We give you thanks for all who are working in all the supply chains trying to deliver to everyone. May we not look only after ourselves, 
but seek to offer the same opportunities to all. Help us not to be selfish, but always to consider others. Lord, we long for the day when all of society will be equal. May we be part of making that happen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are lonely and have no one to eat with them. May we, when we can, open our doors to our neighbours so that love and friendship can flourish and all can enjoy the feast. We pray for all in any kind of need, sickness or adversity. We pray for those who have been bereaved. We give you thanks for the chaplaincy services in our hospitals, bringing words of comfort to the dying and comforting those who are bereaved. Merciful Father, we ask in Jesus' name, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And following the funeral of his Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, we pray, God of our lives, we give you thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for the love he shared among us, and for his devotion to duty. Be close to all who mourn for him, especially the Queen and all members of the royal family. May they know the hope of your promise and the comfort of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept these prayers for the sake of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, today's hymn as part of our service is Lord of the Dance. And so let me hand over to Joe now as he plays it. It's a great hymn, a modern hymn, because it reminds us that God is always with us, that Jesus is always working in our hearts and requiring a response. And so let us sing that now. <laughs> Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all 
wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he Well, thank you very much, for Joe, for playing. Thank you very much for joining us for our service. Next week will be the last of our weekly online services. I can't believe we, when we started them 56 weeks ago um, that we'll be still be doing these now. Um, I do hope that you've received a lot out of them. And thank you very much for all the people who have watched and all the tremendous comments that we have received. Going forward, we're going to be doing a monthly online service and so you can tune into that any time during the month. And so there'll be one at the beginning of May, and we should be able to tune in for the first Sunday of May. Or you can come to any of our churches. Um, most of them are opening up during May, and hopefully over the summer, we're getting back to a more normal pattern of worship within our buildings, depending on the rates, of course. Do keep safe, do keep well, and let me say a final prayer and blessing. Let us say together, the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well pleasing in his sight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. We are raised to new life with Christ. We go in his peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. See you next week.